cleaning the transmission. Yeah. Right over here. No, don't spray me. <laughs> okay, so today I'm gonna be putting, starting to put the transmission back together. I can't get the whole thing done in this video, so we'll break it down a little bit. I have to get a different direct drum for my 34 element spray. So we'll go over that in a different video, but today we're gonna start getting everything together up to the center support, and we're gonna be adding the case saver. So this is gonna be like a partial rebuild and adding a trans brake. So some of the stuff will be different than doing a complete rebuild. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is measuring this thrust washer and I measure the thickness of this. So I'm gonna take the caliper here and I'm gonna measure, it's like 141. So uh, the I'm gonna be rollerizing the rear output so instead of this washer style setup for the rear section, it's going to be a three piece roller style bearing. So the reason I had to measure it is because I'm going to have to shim the rear section to make up for the difference. So if we measure this bearing, this comes out to like 135. And then I'm gonna add this shim to the back side of it. So the kit comes with three different thicknesses of shim. So now I'm gonna add that, and this is the closest size. I already measured this, so 148. So it's, it's pretty close. That's the one I'm gonna go with. And this is how I'm gonna put this thing in the case. I'm gonna put the shim down first. I'm gonna take the black side and put that down. So let's start there. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is put this bearing in there. And we're going to want to make sure that this bushing is protruding out. This one is, if you're replacing the bushing, you have to make sure that there's a, there's like a surface to catch the bearing and the shim. So this one's fine. So I'm going to put the shim on. You can see how it kind of catches, holds it into position. And then take the black side of this bearing, push it down. So now we have our, uh, rollerized output section. Next we're going to be putting in the reverse band. What I'm going to do here is line these up with these two little double pins that are down there in the case. So I'm just going to put this in and that is going to be good. Next we take the whole carrier assembly and lift it up and put it in. So what I like to do with this is put a big vice grip over the top of it like that so I can just lift it down I got a nice little handle then I can take that thing off so now that is in reverse band is in next we're going to be taking this snap ring the snap ring is going to go down over the top of the carrier assembly And then this is what the center support is going to rest on. So next thing we have to do is the center support. I'm also, part of my trans brake, because we're dual feeding here, is removing this ceiling ring. So that center middle ceiling ring is removed, and that's because we're doing the dual feed mod. So... Now we're going to put this thing down in there. There's three holes and you're going to line that up with the case. And then you might have to rotate the output shaft to get it to drop down. Now what you're going to want to do is check to make sure that this center support is lined up with these holes. I'm going to rotate the output shaft, see how it dropped down and now the holes are lined up. That's what you're going to want to look for. Okay, so after we get the center support in and everything is lined up, I'll make sure it's down all the way. Then we got uh, 
the beveled snap ring that's going to go on top so you can see that this has a bevel on it bottom side is flat so put this in here So there it clicked into place, so now center support can't come out. And next we have all the clutches and steels that are, that are going to go in there. So this kit that I'm using has four clutches and steels. Factory is going to have three. So I'm also removing the, the wave plate and replacing it with a, a not wave plate. So that's what that one was that I just put in there. That's one of the thicker ones from the factory mixed with mixed with my kit to get the clearance that I know I need. So with this all set up this way I have about uh, 48 thousandths clearance. And I'll show you guys that. So my trans brake kit comes with a thicker intermediate snap ring. So that I can put in. Make sure that it seats all the way down into the case. It looks like it might have to come back out. I'm gonna have to make some adjustments. Oh, there we go. So now it's snapped in. Everything's loose. And make sure the clutches are good. So I'm gonna pull the feeler gauge out. There we go. Now you can see the feeler gauge is in there. It's nice and tight. So that was about, I have a 15, a 16, and an 18 stacked up together. So 49 thousandths. So that should be good there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the case saver in. So the case saver, what that's going to do is it's going to go over this section here where there's a split in the snap ring. Because when you get your apply pressure, you can start to push this out under high load. So the case saver basically sits over the top of the snap ring like this. And it just adds an extra surface for that uh, snap ring to apply against. In order to do this you have to drive out this little dowel pin here. So there's going to be a pin that comes in through the case right here and you'll see that when you pull it apart because this band is has a hole where that dowel pin rides. So this would normally be applied in here like this but with the trans brake and the manual valve body setup we're not going to be using that so we're going to Take that dull pin, drive that pin out. All I did was heat it up on the outside of the case. And then I just used a flathead and hit it with a hammer a couple times and then that pin pops out. So then you take the case saver, put it in like that. Put your uh, big bolt in. So that's all the way in and then you're going to have this little guy. This is going to go in from the bottom side where the servo pin was for that band because we're not using it anymore. So I'm just going to go in through the bottom side and tighten this up and then I'll show you what it looks like. Alright and this is on the side of the case here if you reference your cooler ports. This is that pin right here that you're going to drive out. This is the nut for the case saver. That's what the case saver looks like, and it's holding down that snap ring. And then in here is where that other bolt goes. So this is where that other servo was, and then you just put that right in there, into the plate, and then you're done. So that's about all I'm going to do for this video. I'm waiting on some parts yet. So when I pulled my direct drum apart today to do the 34 element Sprague upgrade, this is the wrong drum. 
So this transmission was from a, a different year that I am not able to use that sprag on this drum. So I ordered a different drum and then I can go over that in a different video. And I'm also going to be doing the the piston upgrade on the center support. So I am going to pull these clutches back out and then change the piston on this. It's going to be more like a 4L80 style aluminum piston instead of the piston that's in there. So I am going to be I am going to be doing the piston upgrades on all of the drums and getting rid of the stamp steel style drum. The stamp steel style just has like one ring around it to push up on the clutches, which you can see here on this wave plate that that's where it applies. So you basically that's your whole apply surface. So when that piston gets fluid behind it and then it applies, it's just pushing down in this one area here. Whereas these actually have two rings and some good support. So you got a lot more area, surface area pushing up on the clutches. So yeah, that's it for this one. And I'll be back in a couple days when I get the other parts and then we'll finish putting this thing together.